do I have any deacons on with us yeah. now? Got, you know, we got a junior, uh, uh, a junior layman. Um, Y'all, we're going to use him. This is what we have here. So, uh, young, young, uh, young brother uh, Marvin, uh, Tyler, would, would you open us with a word of prayer, sir? Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, we have been studying here in the in the PM Bible study. We've been studying uh, in in the book of Isaiah. Uh, we're on chapter six at this point. Uh, kind of moving forward, and and uh, it's it's amazing what what God does. How He just set things in place so that it's at the right place at the right time uh, in our lives um, and um, first of all just by way of review uh, we know this that uh, Israel was not actually God was very ups was very upset with Israel amen those of you who have been with us and can somebody tell me why yeah. why he was upset with Israel uh, at this time and worshiping false idols okay exactly exactly they have been worshiping false idols worshiping false gods they had been intermingling uh, fornication well yeah it, that that was an issue uh, but at this point in time, that the primary thing that I think those were things that started coming as a result uh, of starting to move away from God. Uh, and, you know, when when the time comes and there is a movement away from God, uh, generally speaking, you know, that is not a a quick move that people make. It it, it just we kind of drift away. Amen. That, that it doesn't it doesn't really happen at just one moment that you're here and then another moment that you're gone, it almost happens in a way where you never really recognize exactly what was going on. And, um, uh, in, and we drift away. Uh, but God was not happy with them primarily because they had been serving other gods. In fact, we know this because as he spoke about the different kings, one king after another after another, how did he... How did he um, describe the kings? There were there were one of two ways. What were they? Anybody want to help me? I I know you know the answer to this one. This this is one of the easy ones. He would start out and he would mention the king's name and he would say. There you go. There you go. There you go. There were good kings, <laughs> and then there were. And what's the word that he used? Did he use bad? Evil. 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 That 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 he called them evil, uh, in his sight, and, and and the reason being is because they permitted or encouraged uh, idol worship in the land. Here's the thing. Not just in the land, in the promised land, the land that he gave them, mm -hmm. that he made available, that they allowed this to happen. So, so he was not happy with them, with where they had gone. And here's the thing, church. He had given them time and time and time again to get this thing right. Over and over, he had warned them. He had sent up, he had sent people to tell them, but they still would not listen. So he was upset with Israel. At this time. Now, on occasion, you would get a good king. 
you were there, there were only a handful of them. I think there were seven that we said that if you wouldn't count it all of them up, there were seven over the course of, of all these years. Uh, I'm sorry. No, oh, okay. That that there were seven over the course of of all the years that uh, that they had kings, um, and there were a few good ones, and one of the good ones was King Uzziah. Okay, and, and so um, once again we're looking at Isaiah chapter six, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you this, if, if there if there's an opportunity, uh, those of you who are on the conference call, you might want to go ahead and mute your phone so that background conversations can stay in in your household and we could we don't want you forget that you got a live mic in front of you <laughs> all right um the chapter six starts out saying this that uh it says this in the year that king uzziah died okay now i want to stop there for a moment because does anybody remember if King Uzziah was a good king or an evil king. Good king. He was a good king. He was a good king. In fact, he was a good king who had ruled and reigned uh, for 52 years. Okay. Now, uh, and, and this text it starts out, and once again, as God begins to paint this picture, uh, it starts out saying that what I'm going to talk to you about happened in the year that King Uzziah died. Um, for 52 years, he had been king, and now he's gone. Now, there's a, there's a, a point in time that most uh, anyone who was born before um, November... 22nd 1963 does anybody know what happened on November 22nd 1963 uh, Kennedy was uh, assassinated. yes 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 that was the day that uh, President Kennedy was assassinated um, and now and I'm gonna ask a couple of you if you would share with me um, when you found out that those of you who can remember when you found out that Kennedy had been, President Kennedy had been assassinated. Where were you at? Sister Ray Quarles, I was in seventh grade language arts. We all said, oh my goodness. Okay. You were in seventh grade. I was in grade school. Yeah, language arts. Language arts. You remember the classroom that you were in? Yes. Okay. Can you still see the picture? The teacher and everything. You, you, yes. can, you can still see it. Okay, good. Anybody else? Reverend Fuquay? <laughs> yeah, some of you were, were born. Yeah, uh, I, Reverend Fuquay? I was, in, I, was in, uh, I was in the third grade, and I couldn't understand why everybody was running around crying and screaming and yelling and screaming and yelling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And I realized it was really happening. Now, I had to actually go in and work that day. I ha- I was working in Frankfurt, Illinois. And um, as I was driving on the highway to work, it was helicopters all over my head. Okay. 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 Yeah, does... I was at work uh, at a school. Get a little bit closer. Get a little bit closer to the mic, if you I said, would. I, I said, I think everybody needs to come out of their meetings. I think something terrible has happened. Okay. We watched it on the TV. Okay. Yep. Okay. Think about it. Once we learn, we saw what happened. For those next few hours, what do you? What was being felt? Um, I had a lot of fear. Okay, fear. Yeah, fear, anxiousness. Yeah, anxiety. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay, because we didn't really know what was happening. That 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 mm-hmm. there, we kind of suspected that something wrong had happened, but there were a lot of things. There was a lot of confusion at, at that time. Isaiah starts out this text, and y'all, he starts out this text in this chapter. He is making a testimony. And he's take, making a testimony about how he was called. And he starts out giving us a description of, of what things were like when this period of time. He's setting the scene. And he said it's in the year that King Uzziah, Uzziah died. Uh, and when that happened, that you can imagine just like in 1963 and just like in 2001, that there was some anxiety. Why? Because the king was dead and there's enemies about. Okay, and and the question is what happens? So there's some some there's a lot of confusion. Uh, now we don't have to go a long ways to, to find out about confusion because all we need to do is to go and to look back a, about a month ago and some questions start coming out about some things that are happening right here. And right now, uh, in this in the world as we live right now, uh, if you watch the news at any point in time, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of fear that's going on even right now. Uh, so he, watch this. There was anxiety then. There's anxiety now. But watch this. The next thing that the text says, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, uh, it says, and this is Isaiah chapter 6, anybody who just came in. Uh, in the year that King Uzziah died, watch this, he says, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. Okay. In the midst of any confusion, in the midst of anxiety, in the midst of despair, y'all, God is still on the throne. Okay. Okay, and, and as long as he is still on the throne, then what do we know? He's still in control. He's in control, and we're going to be what? Just fine. Okay. okay. We're okay. We're okay. He, he promised us. We're going to be okay. We're going to be just fine. He promised us this. And that, so that in the midst of all the confusion and everything, even right now, we're okay. Okay, and, and 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 why? Because we're his children, and he will take care. Mm-hmm. He will Amen. take care. Okay, and so so here's a, Isaiah said in the midst of everything going on, I, he said, "I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. Watch this, high and lifted up." Mm-hmm. Okay, that that that. And once again, now he's painting a picture for us. Uh, of who he is now once again that he is that that he is the 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 lord of lord and the king of kings uh and and he saw him and uh, in a position where you would look up to him and then it says this it says and his train filled the temple mm-hmm. now the train that they're talking about anybody anybody tell me what what the train is are we talking about a locomotive no no a robe, or, or or exactly, exactly, and and watch um, uh, in a wedding that when the bride comes down the aisle, uh, oftentimes there is someone to carry what to hold what her train, 
to hold, hold the, the, train. the train. Right, right, right. That will do that. Now, yeah. here's the thing for kings, especially back in, in that time, that the, uh, the train would represent the power of the king. And so the longer and the, the, the more volume that there was in the train would indicate the strength and the power of that particular king. Uh, well, this one, this, uh, the Lord's train that the, he saw filled the temple. Okay. Okay. So, so once again, he's painting a picture. Now, I, I got through this, but I got to go back and, and I got to point out something else. It says this. I saw also the Lord. Now, do you see anything different about the way that Lord is written in that text right there? It's capital line. Okay, all caps. Capital line. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that that Lord is written in all caps. What does that tell you? Does anybody know what that tells you? There you go. There you go. We're talking about him as the I am. And when we do that, also, we're talking about him. So we're talking about uh, at this point in time, you can translate the word Jehovah. And then when you do that, you can also say that once again, now we are looking at uh, at the he's what he saw was the visible image of the invisible God. OK, and who is the visible image of the invisible God? There you, go. My, my, there you go. My wife said it, and I heard somebody else say it. Yeah, he, he, he that, that. So once again, what we're talking about is the second person in the Godhead. How do I know that? One, we see it written there. But two, let's 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 look also and let Scripture uh, um, uh, uh, define Scripture. And so, if somebody would, I need you. And then once again, once you find this. Call out your name and let me call you so we don't have two or three people trying to do this at the same time. But I need somebody to look up John chapter 12, and, and I need you to read verse 40 and 41. Now, whoever does this, I need you to get close to the mic on your phone so that you can be heard. Okay, John John chapter 12, verse 40 and 41. Sister Burnell. He hath blinded th their eyes and hardened thy heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal him. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory, and spake of him. Okay, good. So once again, now watch it. Um, I need you to look at something. I, I need somebody. I'm going to have you read verse 40 again, but I need somebody else to read verse 10 for me. Who will read verse 10 for me? Sister Romeo. Okay, Sister Romeo. Okay, no, don't read it yet. Okay, S Sister Burnell, I need you to read 40 again. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Amen. Okay, Sister Romel? You said verse 10, right? Verse 10. Okay, but the chief priests consulted that they Oop, might wait a minute. put Lazarus I, also I, to death. Isaiah chapter 6. I, I'm sorry, I apologize. I apologize. Isaiah chapter 6. My, my fault. Okay. Isaiah chapter 6, oh, verse 10. 10 right? Yes. Okay. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and convert and be healed. Okay. Are, are those two scriptures talking about the same thing? Is is John? Yes. John is here referring to this particular verse in Isaiah, correct? Correct. Okay. In fact, when uh, when in in the book of John, when it says Isaiah, what is that? Who is he talking about? Is that Isaiah. a? It's Isaiah. It's Isaiah. Isaiah. 
Right, but, but since since we're it's written in Greek, then we're seeing it the way that they would say it. Then so so once again, so he's he's talking about Isaiah, and then so and watch this, and he says this in forty one. He said these things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Who's he talking about? Jesus. Okay. So who did Isaiah see? Sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. The Lord. The Lord. The, okay, good, good, good. Once again, and, and we're seeing this, that, 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 that he saw the Lord. He saw God with us, uh, Emmanuel, and, and we would call him Jesus. Okay, but pre-incarnate. Okay, before that. All right, so we wanted, just wanted to kind of paint that picture uh, of what he saw. And once again, keep in mind the setting that they were in at the time um, and, and how people were feeling. But now this is happening in his life. Verse two, and he said this, above it stood the seraphim. Okay, got to stop there for a minute. Because anybody tell me what a seraphim is? A creature. Um, a, a preacher? No. Angel. Angels. There, it's an angel. Okay, okay. It it is um, it's an angel. However, um, the seraphim are not spoken of a lot in the Bible. You don't can't read a lot about them. Uh, and usually, when we think about angels, uh, the, all the pictures that we see show um, uh, either either it's a little. Fat and chubby baby with with, with a uh, or or a big strong muscular bodybuilding kind of uh, a character that has how many wings? Six. No, when we the one when you when you think of an angel, two wings. You usually think of an angel with two wings, right? Okay. Oh, and, two wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what this is saying is that this seraph these seraphims they had six wings. Okay, it said each one had six wings. Now it says, and with twain, he covered his face. Twain meaning what? Two. Two. Okay, with two of them, he covered his face. Yeah. And with two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did fly. Okay? Now, Here's the question, man, because we don't want to take it for granted. Uh, it, it says, with two, he covered his face. Does anybody want to speculate why the face might have been covered? It was like a preacher. Okay. Because they couldn't, they couldn't, couldn't look on the Lord. Okay, they, they couldn't look at So, 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 watch this. Um, and, 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 I, and I believe that... Uh, Watch this, that, that this was uh, an act of worship. It was an act of, uh, of praise and humility. So watch, what do we do, or I should say, what should we do when we uh, pray? We, we close our eyes and, and we also do what? And, and bow our heads. We, we, we close our eyes and we bow our heads. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now, do we do that because we're scared? No. Why? No. Why do we do it? It's a form of worship. It is worship. It is reverence. There you go. There you go. So, 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 very true. Very true. So, so once again, so we have it with, with, Two of his wings. And here's the thing that's amazing. It, look, God doesn't make anything without a reason. Think about the bodies that we have. We, the Bible tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Everything that we have, everything in our body, everything has a purpose. Okay? It, it, we did not just happen. I'm sorry. I, I, anybody who says that we just happened by accident that we just came into being. Uh, there's just, it's just too, we're just too well built to be able to, to have been an accident. Okay, or, or, or an incident. Yeah, I'm sorry? 
Okay, yeah, so so there, there's just too much uh, in place. So God has everything. Uh, fingernails have a purpose. Eye, eyelashes and eyebrows have a purpose. Everything has a purpose. God created these uh, seraphim, and he created them with six wings. Therefore, we know that the six wings had a purpose. So once again, he said that two of them he would use to cover his face. They were used to cover their faces. And then he said with two... They covered their feet. Why do you think that might be? Anybody? Let, let me do this. Let me, let me help a little bit. Let me take you back to uh, a man named Moses. And Moses encountered um, when he had his introduction to God. He was on holy ground. He was on holy ground. Okay. Okay. And, and so, so there was a, a way that he would present himself, right? Mm -hmm. So we got his face, we got the face covered, we got the feet covered, and then the other two were to, fly. to fly. Okay, good. Good. And, and so, so it's, verse three says this, and it says, and one cried unto another and said, holy, fly. holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. What what does the word holy mean? Pure. Pure. Okay. Okay. So do you think that it's significant that it says holy three times? Mm -hmm. the Father, the Son, and the Holy yes, Spirit. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so we're worshiping the, the, the Godhead and, and and we know that they're present by something that's going to be said a little bit later and I'm going to work real hard to be able to get there <laughs> okay alright so keep that in mind put a pin in that part right there when we talk about the Trinity um, yeah, in fact let's uh, well, no I'm going to get there I'm going to get there means pure. pure that's right that's right and, and now here's the thing godly and humble exactly. and now, willing to serve Amen. Amen. So what's when we know that, that God is pure, right? Is is there anything yeah. is there anything that can ever change the fact that he is pure? No. 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 no, no. He he's the pure he's pure no. yesterday, today and forever. He's going to be eternally pure. Nothing is going to be able to change that, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean it's 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 physically impossible. So do you think that it presents a problem when sinful man wants to come into the presence of a holy God who will always be holy? It becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you this question. I, I've, got a, I've got a brand new white shirt. I haven't even worn it yet. However, if a tiny, a tiny microscopic bit of dirt got on my white shirt, here's the question, is my shirt still clean? No, no, it no look, my whole shirt mm -hmm. is dirty if there was just a little tiny piece uh, uh, of dirt that gets on it. So, so if I'm going to keep a white shirt, then dirt can never be associated with it, right? Okay. Right. Yeah. This illustrates really the, the problem that we have with sin. Okay? Because we then become, are, are we holy? By ourselves? No. No, no. no. By, by ourselves, we are, we, in fact, uh, we, uh, we don't have any righteousness our righteousness is what? Jesus Christ. Yeah, or how would you describe, how, would, how does the Bible describe the righteousness of man? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. Okay, the best, y'all, the best that we can do, if we clean up everything, put it all together, wrap it up in a bow, we put everything together, the best that we are able to do is to simply be filthy rags. Okay, that's the best that we're able to do. 
So if we try to come into the presence of God, uh, we, we can't be in his presence uh, because we would be like that piece of dirt. Uh, but God's not going to change. Something's going to have to give. And so that's why our God is a consuming fire, right? Yes. That if you came into his presence in an impure state, you would be consumed. Okay, we can't have fellowship with him except for the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. That, that, that because he has, he has made it so that we can be in his presence. He has justified us. Okay, and therefore God has declared us, and watch this, God has declared us to be just as holy and just as righteous as Jesus Christ himself. Okay, that's a good thing. That's an encouraging thing. But here in this text that the, the seraphim were crying out, holy, holy, holy. And you know, they were claiming it with power. It, it said, they said, the, the, the holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And that's something that we probably need to remember, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because we have some difficult times. Yeah. We go through some difficult things. Uh, and in the midst of all of the difficulty, all of the challenges that, that come, uh, sometimes I think we forget what this says here. It, it, it says that even in the midst of all of it, the whole earth is still full of his glory. It doesn't mean there are not going to be problems. And it doesn't mean that there are not going to be trials and tribulation. Jesus told us that there would. Okay, uh, Job lets us know that in this life, there's, every man uh, born of a woman is few days and all of those days are filled with trouble. Uh, in fact, we can't even conceive of a day. We can't even conceive of having a day when there are no problems. Uh, I think we would be concerned if we woke up in the morning and things just went well. <laughs> all right. Uh, so so uh, we're used to that. But 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 we need to remember that 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 God's glory uh, fills this this uh, fills the whole earth. That as these, but as these seraphim were, were, were crying out, holy, 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 look at verse 4. It, it tells that the power that they are making this declaration, that they're worshiping. And this, this is worship, right? That, that they are, these uh, seraphim are doing when they're crying out, holy, holy, holy. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is worship. Yeah. Uh, what is worship? How do you define worship? Sister Britt, this is your moment. Oh, I mean, may I have it with it? Okay, listen. Worship is is um, uh, manifesting or declaring uh, our love for God. Okay, it, it is declaring our love for God, and, and so we have we take the moment uh, to be able to show God God how much we love Him, and when we do that, that is worship. Okay, and what they were doing was was worshiping Him. At this time, declaring their love for him. Up, oh, somebody needs to go. On, somebody needs to go on mute. Somebody needs to go on mute. Okay, good, good. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, but as they were doing this, as they were worshiping God, it says this in verse four. It says, "And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried." Okay, I'm gonna stop here for a moment and and ask. For whoever it is, I need you to go on mute. If you're in the kitchen right now moving pots and pans, just so to be a little bit more specific, I need you to be on mute. Okay, amen. Amen. All right. Um, look, look, yeah, sorry about that. It, but it says this. Uh, it says that as they were, as these uh, uh, seraphim were worshiping God, they worshiped with such power that the post of the door moved, okay, that, that, that it was vibrating, it was shaking uh, with the power of their worship. Here's my question. Do we worship like that? I mean, do we do, do, we do that as, as we worship God? Do, do we worship him uh, to just 
sometimes y'all, if you be careful, we'll be honest, sometimes we just go through the motions, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah, we, we do. We do. Sometimes we just go through the motions. We we show up. We show up. But but what it's saying here is those who were in the presence of God, that they worshiped him with such power and conviction that it affected those things that were around. Okay, That's how we need to be worshiping. Yeah, and not that we're going to worship loud, but it needs to be able to affect the things that are around us. Okay, so that it because it should not just be a localized thing, uh, uh, but but we should be able to, um, uh, uh, to to give so much of ourselves that uh, that that the the power that comes from us changes things. Amen. Said Amen. said Amen. and the and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Okay. Um, do me a favor, if you would. Uh, somebody, I need I need a reader again. Uh, Sister Romel, uh, you you got I can hear you yeah. well. So if if you wouldn't mind looking up Revelations, chapter fifteen, verse eight. If you would read that to us, okay. let me know when you get it. Revelations, chapter I'm fifteen. Here okay, good, good. If you'll read that to me. And the, yes, and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Good. So, so, so somebody else tell me, why was there smoke filling the, uh, filling the temple? Good, because it, it was from the glory of God. So here in this text, it says that the house was filled with smoke. Can we can we say, because we serve a consistent God, that uh, that that what we see here is the presence of God being manifested in that place. That it was filled. They were worshiping Him, and and the place where they were worshiping was filled with His glory. Yeah. That's what we, when we come into worship, you know, if we're looking for a goal, that's one for you, is to have God so, so present that he fills the place uh, with his presence, okay? Now, once again, now, 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 we're painting a picture here of what's happening, but we got to remember that this is the testimony of Isaiah, all right. Mm -hmm. And and he has he's explaining the atmosphere of the place where he's at. And he is in the presence of God. We know that because the place was filled with smoke when he got there. Then at this point in time, he said this verse five. He said, then said I, woe is me for I am undone. Mm -hmm. All right. It, look, when when some when he says, woe is me, what is that saying? Cause we don't we don't usually say woe is me. There's no hope for me. He said there's no hope for me. Okay, yeah, he's he, and and that the I am an undone portion is that woe is me. Like oh no, I was say, oh, Lord, have mercy. oh Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, he did. Look, I mean, and, and he and and once again he's looking at himself and realizing that what am I doing here? Because I know me, and I know where I'm at, and I'm in the presence of God. So here's the question, y'all. What made him, what is it that made him see himself? All of a sudden, he sees himself differently. Let me ask this, before you answer that question, um, who was sitting on the throne? Jesus. Jesus, okay, and what do we, what do we call him? The light of? The world. The world. Okay, good. So he is... Standing in the light. Now, now here's something that, that happened. Uh, one day I, I put on um, uh, a suit. And when I was in the house, it looked one color. 
But when I stepped outside, it looked another color. Because I went from uh, a yellow light to a natural light. Okay. What happened to Isaiah here is that the light will reveal who you really are. Okay. The light real he recognized him. And it, when he says, woe is me, it's almost like he was surprised. It, woe is me, exclamation point. He says, I'm messed up. I'm messed up. Why? Because I know about myself. I, I'm a man of unclean lips. Okay. Uh, and look, and I live in the midst of people with unclean lips. Okay. That, 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 that I'm, I'm, I'm in a bad situation because, and he said this, I know me and I know the people who I surround myself with. Okay, and, and and I really don't belong in this place, but here I am. Here I am uh, I, in this house filled with smoke. Okay, in house filled with the presence of God. Once again, we know this because he said this, for mine eyes, verse 5 goes on to say, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And Lord there is in all caps, right? So I, I've seen, I, my eyes have seen the king and, uh, and, and he has had a, a recognition, uh, has this recognition of who he really is because he has seen himself in the natural light, the, the proper light. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes um, the Bible tells us this. Uh, that men love darkness rather than light. Uh, what does that mean? They like sin more than being holy. Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we, exactly. We, we would prefer to, to in, in, in this flesh that we find more joy oftentimes in sin, more comfort in sin than we do uh, in in the light. Okay. Now, the reason being, oftentimes, the reason being is because this flesh uh, craves sin. Yeah, our flesh craves sin. We yeah we. If we had a preference, uh, we would that we could find a way to sin and still be okay, then we would probably take it. Okay, now, the truth of the matter is we have, but uh, but He don't want us to sin. We got Jesus, and uh, and we sin, uh, but we still live in His grace. Amen. Amen. Uh, and 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 because Amen. of that, uh, but sometimes Amen. sometimes we engage in what I call grace abuse. <laughs> All right. That, that we know we got grace, and so we go out and take advantage of, of what we have. That's not what he wants. He's not looking uh, for us to do that. He wants us to, to be all in. Uh, Isaiah recognized who he was. Uh, now, when you recognize who you are, when you recognize that you're a sinner, what we got to do is not stay that way, right? That, that, that. That that's the, the, the time that you recognize that you have sinned is the time when you should start working on that, right? The, in, in that, it, is, isn't that what God loved about David? David, y'all, David was was messed up. I'm sorry, there, there's no good way to say it. He he, he was a liar. He was a cheater. Uh, an adulterer. Uh, he, he was a murderer. Uh, I mean, and the list can goes on and on and on. Uh, and, and, but the Bible still just declares David as a man after God's own heart. That he was the apple of his eye. Because whenever he, it would come to him that I have sinned against my God, that David would take that moment and he would repent. Okay? And repentance 
has two steps. There are two. So what's the first step? What's the first thing that has to happen if you're going to repent? There must be a heartfelt heart sorrow. sorrow. Amen. There must be a heartfelt sorrow within my heart that I reckon. And what are we sorrowful about? Uh, doing wrong against God. That, that, that we, God. Amen. That we, the, and look, we yes. dis, every time you sin, understand this, every time you sin, you disappoint God. Right. Okay. Every time, right. every time you sin, you disappoint him. Uh, and, and now that you know that, that when you recognize that what I have done has hurt daddy, then now I don't want to do that anymore. I, and I feel bad about what I've done. Okay, that, that if, 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 I, if I had played a part, and we know that we have, played a part in daddy having to shake, put his head down and to shake it, and, and it comes back to me, that should bother us. That's the heartfelt sorrow. The, and, and the Holy Spirit then convicts us so that we know that daddy's not happy with us. Okay, the Holy Spirit moves within you and, and, and he, he says, uh, he, he lets you know this and you feel the, the, the heaviness. You feel the weight of, of the moment. Um, uh, but so first step is that there must be a heartfelt sorrow if we're going to repent. The second step is what? Turn back to God. Turn back toward God. Okay. Mm -hmm. That now I, I give up everything that, I, that I've done and Lord, I recognize that I've messed up, but now I'm going to turn right back to to the God that I serve. I'm, I'm and I'm going to and watch this. It, it's turning back toward God, and here's the other part behind it, and, and burning the bridge behind me. Now, mm -hmm. what does that mean? You don't go back to that same sin. I I'm I'm not going back. Okay. That's right. Yeah, now. Now that's what we say. Now what do we say? I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to try. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's not burning the bridge. <laughs> I ain't come to that level. Yeah, I haven't grown to that level yet. We give ourselves all kind of reasons and excuses for 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 the, not. The Lord's still working on the me. The Lord's still working on me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, we. Put which, the Lord on my heart. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Which means all that means that I'm probably going to do it again the next time. Uh, <laughs> all right. I mean, that's, that's really that's really what we're saying. Yeah, all right. And, and what, what, what the Lord wants is for you to burn the bridge. And that's one of the things about David. Yo, and when you go back and you read the story in his life that that he never repeated the same sin. It, it, anything that's recorded that he doesn't repeat. And, and then, watch this. Not only does he not do that, and when God issues his, his edict, his, his judgment on him, his punishment, he didn't even complain. Okay? He just really, this is what I get for what I did. Okay? So, uh, so uh, uh, here, here he is, and now we've gotten to this point and, and uh, to the point of repentance. Watch this. Verse 6 says uh, that once again, once he had recognized whose presence he was in and what he owed to God, verse 6 says, Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand. Coal, C-O-A-L, coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips. And thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Wow. Yeah. Now watch this. Um, the song says this. Now we need to find out what, what, is, what is being said here. Uh, uh, it, it, when, when we get to that, that part there, and the last part of verse 7, somebody read verse 7. Uh, after the semicolon. Your, your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Okay, good, 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 good. Here's a question. What is the only thing that can wash away your sins? Jesus. 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Okay? Okay. So 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 when we're talking about this this coal that touched him, okay, the coal that touched him, the coal then has to represent the 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 blood of Christ. Yeah. Okay? Okay. And now watch this. But but it says that that uh they took it from the um uh, uh from the altar. Okay. Now the altar that they're talking about is called the altar of sacrifice. Okay? And the altar of sacrifice is where uh the the, the sacrifice would be made so that you could be uh have your sins removed. Okay? Now, where would in our life, uh, we talked about the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So what would the what would the altar of sacrifice be? Where did it all happen? Mm -hmm. On an old rugged cross. Okay? Okay? So so if we look at that and look at this text that way, then what it's saying is this that he's just now once again in Isaiah, as we go further in this um this text, um in Isaiah, Isaiah speaks so clear and so plain about Jesus. Uh, he paints a picture so very, very clear that uh, that it, you can almost feel like you're right there with them. Okay, now watch this. I know we're running out of time. I got four minutes, uh, but 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 I wanted to get to this part here coming up here. Uh, uh, so he touched him. He cleansed him. He, he y'all. He was saved. Okay, that, that, that's what we're saying, that, that God took, washed away all of his sins. Mm -hmm. And now this one who was not fit to be in his presence, verse 5, mm -hmm. who was undone because of his unclean lips, that now he has been made clean by the purging that was done. So the work does not stop then. It, it does not stop then that once you've been cleared, once you've been purged, once things have been taken care of, uh, it, it, you can't just sit back and rest on your salvation. Okay? Because guess what? There is work to be done. Okay? We don't work in order to be saved. And this tells us that we don't work to get saved. But we're going to learn here in a second here. You work because you are saved. Watch this. After he had been cleansed, that verse 8 says this. Uh, and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go? Here we go. This is what I was telling you I was going to get to. For who? Uh, For us. Uh, All right. So he said this, whom, whom shall I, singular, shall I send mm -hmm. and who will go for us? Mm -hmm. Who is the us that he's talking about? Say it again. No, no. Okay, okay, watch this. Um, when God created man, prepared, he said this. Let us make man in our image. Now, there we go. There we go. The, 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 the council uh, at this point in time. And, and so here's the reference uh, back to the fact that uh, that we're talking about this Trinity, this this um, this God in three persons, uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 What? Watch this. But here's here's what he said as they move forward. He said he said this. Uh, also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Okay. And who will go for us? And then it says, then said I, here I am. Send me. Here's my question. Where was he going? What was he going to have him do? To the cross. He was going to tell him to go to the people, spread the word. Well, well, but but once again, at, as he says this, 
Does Isaiah know what he's going to have him say? All he said is, Who's going, who am I going to send? Who's going to go for us? Watch this. Here's the thing. He's doing the same thing here that Abraham did when he said, Go to a land I will show you. Mm. Abraham, Abram, he should say it properly. At the time, he was Abram. Abram didn't say, Well, Lord, where do I go? He just put one foot in front of the other. And started walking. Okay. And here, Isaiah uh, uh, is, is saying, um, I don't know what you want me to do. And I'm not going to get hung up on the details. I'm just ready to do whatever it is that you have for me to do. So, here I am, send me. Now, think about, think about many of us. Um, our question is not here. I am. Send me. Is is the, our question is well? Why me? <laughs> okay. You well, why why are you calling me? <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, and 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 the here I am part very rarely comes into the equation. <laughs> All right. So so uh, so so, so he, he's saying, but but once again, he's saying there is work for you to do. Uh, so, so verse verse nine says, um, and he said, "Go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not; and see ye indeed, but perceive not." He said, uh, "Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, uh, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed." He's saying. He said, you gonna, I need you to go and I need you to preach a message to the people and I'm just going to let you know in advance they're not going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Do what I told you to do. Okay, you keep preaching. You keep teaching. Okay, sometimes you know, in the midst of our ministries, sometimes it feels like we're not making any progress. It feels like we're not getting any place. But 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 the Bible says that this that my word will not come out go out void, okay. That I'm still going to accomplish what it is that I have to accomplish, okay. Verse eleven, he said, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go real quick and finish up here. I got three minutes on the broadcast here. He said, then said I, Lord, how long? And he said, until the cities be wasted without inhabitants, and the houses without man, and the land without uh, land be in utter be utterly desolate, and, and the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. He, look, he said, you keep preaching, you keep teaching, you keep ministering until there's nobody else to preach to, till there's nobody else to teach to, that there's no one else to minister. You just keep doing what I told you to do. You keep going out and doing that. Keep playing the scene. And it says, verse 13, uh, but yet it shall be a tenth and it shall return, just, just a remnant, and shall be eaten. And as a tell, uh, the tell tree and as an oak whose substance is in them, uh, when, they, um, when they cast their leaves, so shall, uh, I'm sorry, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. That even if it goes down to a stump, that, that it's still going to rise again. And, and it's still going to grow read that, that, that my word's not going to go away, even if the land is desolate. Amen. 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 Good, good, good. All right. All right. Um, Deacon. De yeah. And, and, and we're going we're gonna to wind up because I know it's, it's half past our time. Um, uh, uh, who we got? Who we got? Deacon Hunter, Deacon Hunter, will you dismiss us in prayer, sir? Yes, sir. Most gracious Father, we thank you for once again for this time that you have given us. Father, your service to assemble in your name. Father, we just thank you for. Uh,
you all.